In the next few minutes, you're gonna know exactly how I created all of this in Blender. Let's go. First, I needed an idea. I just spotted this abandoned gas station on the border of Texas, and I'm just like instantly, this has to be a project. Then I found a ton of other images of this exact place on Google Images, loaded up a PureF full of my references, and I'm ready to work. This whole thing is overwhelming. Like, where do I even start? Well, this is just a cube, and this is just a cube, and this is just a plane. So let's get those shapes in there, adjusting them to fit our composition, and of course, comparing it all to the human to match a realistic scale. I'll add a little bit more detail, like the canopy poles and the gas station's roof, also using a background image of the real place to confirm that our block out is lined up. All right, let's start modeling. I'll cut out a reference image and stick it behind the gas station cube. This will show us what areas to separate into different pieces, like the walls and the roof, and also where we should add loop cuts to define windows and doors, just adding edges to all these trims. Now I'll just delete the faces where the glass will be, and then to create these extruded borders, I'll just select around the frames and bring them out. Okay, now the windows are mostly done. Really all we need to do now is give the walls dimension, just extruding these planes out, and then finishing everything up by adding a solidify modifier to our window frames so they're not just flat, and then adding a bevel modifier to smooth out the edges. I also want shattered glass on all the window frames, like in this reference. This is super easy, just adding a plane into each window hole and then using the knife tool to cut out spiky bits of glass. Okay, this looks amazing. Once we get all the materials on it, like the rust and the dirt and the graffiti and all the other crap, it's gonna look pretty awesome. But before we can start texturing, we need to analyze our reference and develop a list of textures that we'll need. For example, here we have a simple white brick, a damaged blue wall, a rusty metal for the roof, basic wood for the boards, and also certain kinds of damage like chipped paint and worn edges. Of course, graffiti is also a huge part of this model. And one of my best friends actually had a bunch of cool pictures of it for me and also some various ones I found online. We're ready to texture. First, I'll just UV cube project our wall and stick this brick material on it. Let's rotate the tops of the bricks like this to match our reference, adjusting the roughness, getting a nice shine to it. And now we'll fake a height map by connecting the base color of the bricks to the normal using a bump node. We'll also add in some color variation, just a darker brick mixing into the lighter brick using a noise texture. Now for the fun part, let's paint in some decals to really push the realism. The material for this is really simple. Just create a 4K image with the secondary color having full alpha. Connect it to the principal BSDF and mix it with your base material using a mix shader, making sure that its alpha channel is connected to the factor. Now in the texture painting mode, we can plug in any decal we want into the texture tab and start slapping down details. Here I'm adding in a nice scratchy dark texture, a really dirty moldy looking guy on low transparency around the bottoms, kind of a splotchy light plaster around the general area, and then this dark dripping nastiness from the tops of the walls. All of this together really helped break up the repeating brickness of the material. Okay, now for the graffiti, uh, it's just the same process as the other decals. Scribble some stuff here, some stuff over here, throwing some tags up, and of course big scary monster looking things, yeah. We can also add a noise texture to the graffiti's alpha to break it up and make it look weathered. This looks fantastic. Now let's texture the windows, just box projecting this too and adding in a base white paint with some roughness, color variations, and height. We'll add decals to this just like in the last mesh, some rust dripping from the tops of the frames, dark scratches, and dirty splotches here and there. And to show some chipping paint, I'll set up a dark metal material and mix it into our paint using a peeling paint mask. Awesome. Now for the roof, this is fairly straightforward, just a dark metal with this red strip running through it, like in our reference. Now I'll paint in the rust decals and dripping grunge to finish it all up. Interior walls are very, very easy too, just adding in an old plaster texture, adjusting it until it looks right, and painting graffiti all over it. All right, our model is pretty much fully textured and it looks sick. Okay, also we need this thingy, which apparently is called a canopy. I never, I never knew what that was called. Starting with the canopy's roof, really all we are doing here is pushing around cubes with mirror modifiers, and then just, well, adding in more cubes, like for where our chevron logo is gonna be placed. I'm also adding edge loops and beveling them, then extruding out these bits of detail. Now I'll just stick on some planes to make these weird sideboards, and a chamfered box to make whatever this is. Lastly, a beam with this frame attached to it, which I think held a sign for the gas prices back in the day. 
So the texturing process for this guy is a little bit different from the gas station building because I'll be slapping some rough textures on and then actually modeling from the textures. Like here, I found a really nice metal industrial texture and then I'll just push UVs around till I line up parts with interesting bits of the image. Now we can take parts of the image that look like they should have geometry and pop them out. For the Chevron logo and other text, I quickly made a mask for it in GIMP, and then I used it to paint in my material. Now I'll just do other various texturing tasks, like making these parts red and rusty, the cube thing all metally and grungy, and the support posts with a bluish metal that's kind of reflective. All right, now we have this model finished really fast and it looks great. Now this grungy cool ground was one of the main reasons I wanted to start this project in the first place. And I think I pulled it off pretty well. So here's how I did it. First, I set up three main materials. I have a basic asphalt here, a cracked asphalt here, and some gravel. I'll blend all three of these guys into each other using noise textures. Here is the base asphalt and the cracked asphalt blending. And then I'll add in the gravel too. With the gravel, I'm making sure to turn its displacement mid-level up to make it look sunken in. All right, cool. We've developed a nice material, and it's time to bring it onto our main terrain, and then create this line between the asphalt and the gravel, like in our reference. This honestly took me forever, and I went through like four entirely different methods to approach it, until I finally just decided I'll paint it all in by hand. So I started by drawing in all the little weird squiggly lines that define the asphalt's profile, and then using stencils, I added little bits of rocks everywhere and then wore down the sides of the asphalt line. Finally, I had something I was super proud of and I think I captured the edge pretty well. All of this looks great so far, but how do we fix things just kind of looking flat? We need way better terrain and grass. First, I'll add a big fat plane behind the gas station, giving it a good amount of subdivisions and then using proportional editing to form some nice hills. I'll also mix together some dirty, sandy textures from Quixel and create this desert material. Now I'll do something similar using proportional editing here in the foreground, creating subtle hills and divots. And then finally, let's paint in the desert terrain material we made for the background into the foreground to tie everything together. Okay, now for the plants. Quixel Megascans has an amazing library of foliage assets, like all of these will work super well for our desert. I exported the best in the blender, organized them, and used them to set up a very simple geometry node-based scattering system. Feel free to pause and copy this setup over. Now I can just experiment with different kinds of plants, combinations of colors, sizes, and densities. I really wanted to mimic the way plants in the desert kind of group together and form these little dense clumps, and a noise texture helps us achieve that pretty well. Here is the result of my final test, looking pretty sick. So I brought it all over onto the giant main terrain in our scene, and right off the bat, it looks like way better than I thought. Actually, it's kind of done immediately. We also, of course, want foliage on our foreground terrain, just copying the geometry nodes over, painting in only where I want it to appear using weight paints, and making slight adjustments to densities and scales. All of this does make a huge difference, and I can really start tasting this world, except... I lost my mind and I deleted everything. I wasn't happy with the progress and I started to become overly critical and I kind of just lost patience with the project. I ended up sticking these like giant sand dunes all over the place, which I mean, they were kind of cool, but they were also bad. And yeah, I got more discouraged to continue working. Every time I work on a big 3D scene, I'm reminded at how important patience is. And you just gotta keep pushing through the annoyingness of it not looking good right this instant and keeping your eye on like that final goal. After like a couple day break, um, I came back to the project, reverted back to where I was, and um, I just added in like some very simple mountains to the scene as kind of a last resort. But it looked so great that I started getting that excitement back. I could all of a sudden kind of imagine the future of this environment again. At first, this project was set in just like a regular desert in present day, but now I was like kind of all of a sudden inspired to make this post-apocalyptic, like kind of like a fallout blended with rust, blended with Far Cry type of deal. So I had this idea of adding in some graffitied uphold cars to the scene. 
I found these really great car scans on Sketchfab, thanks to Raina Fox. And then in Blender, I used the same decal painting technique with the graffiti to really start adding in some character. Honestly, I absolutely love the way these came out and they look even cooler placed around the environment. I'll start to add other various junk stuff around the scene too. Here are some tires I modeled and textured, which will just get hand placed around just like in our reference. And then a whole bunch of other trash like cups and bags and cardboard that will just scatter around using geometry nodes. These small additions definitely add more realism to it all. I also wanted a little bit of a story slash Easter egg thing happening. So I added in these shotgun shells which lead to a blood trail, which leads to a very subtle dead body. Everything I make has a blood trail in it now. Here's the shotgun shell that I made. Very simple, just a cylinder with a little cap. And then I textured it fully procedurally using Blender. Here's the blood trail decal I made in GIMP, just assembling blood splatters from Quixel. And here is the dead body. I got the model from Sketchfab thanks to Reillusion, and then edited, edited, edited him heavily by painting in dirt and a big bullet hole in his head. Once I added in some camera movement and rendered out a 10 second animation, we have this. But currently the colors are super duper boring. There's no sun rays or contrast or glow or anything like that. So. Let's throw it into DaVinci Resolve and make a few adjustments. Adding in blurs, glows, vignettes, levels, color, and lens flares, etc. gives us this final animation. I really hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. This was a really fun, but pretty super difficult project. Yeah, it's just so exciting to pack the whole process into like a short video for someone to hopefully learn from. You guys can expect another big video just like this on YouTube in the next couple months. And also I'm releasing weekly Blender tutorials on my Patreon. All the knowledge I have about 3D and creating my projects is going to be there every single week. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.